NBC7's nightly check-in is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Flood, and Restoration. We know how. Frustration and disappointment over shutting down again. But tonight, the city of San Diego is trying to lessen the blow to restaurants from reclosing. Thank you for joining us for the nightly check-in. I'm Catherine Garcia. Restaurant owners we spoke with today say reopening and then shutting down again has really just been a roller coaster of emotions. It's certainly a frustration. We we do our best to worry about the things we can control. Kevin Sheehan is the COO of Phil's Barbecue, and he says when the first restrictions hit, they had to furlough about 400 employees across four restaurants about a month and a half after they were finally allowed to let people eat in again. But that only lasted a few weeks. They were able to bring about 65% of their workforce back, however. Fast forward to this week, Phil's now has had to shut indoor dining again. They're just one out of thousands of San Diego County restaurants experiencing these same struggles. Every day is uh, constantly changing, constantly evolving, and we're doing our best to roll with the punches and do what's right, do what's safe for our employees and for our fans. To try to help keep businesses afloat, San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner signed an emergency executive order that waives outdoor permits, which they're usually required for restaurants to expand into outdoor spaces. That'll buy some time while the city finalizes a new ordinance that will cut fees and streamline those permits to make it easier for businesses to operate outside. Well, the reason San Diego has had to dial back is because our coronavirus numbers are not meeting the state's metrics. San Diego's rolling average of positive cases per capita is 138.5. That is well above the state's threshold of 100 cases per 100,000 people. There have also been 22 community outbreaks in the past seven days. Many of them happened at restaurants and bars. New research out of UC San Diego is underlining the importance of wearing a face mask and just how tricky of a virus COVID-19 is. Researchers studied the number of cases before and after face mask orders were issued and found masks significantly reduced the spread. They say there is strong evidence suggesting the virus travels through the air. The group also discovered the virus actually disguises itself in kind of a sugary coating in order to hide itself from the human immune system, which then makes it more difficult to stop it once it gets inside of your body. It's another reason why we really, you should wear a mask because once this virus gets inside of you, it has a lot of tricks up its sleeve in terms of, you know, evading your immune system. We do have a link to the face mask study on our webpage. Just go to NBC7.com and search for UC San Diego. Well, pools are a popular spot for families during the summer, but during this pandemic, there are some things you really need to be thinking about. The risk at the pool, of course, isn't from the water itself. It's from the people. Fewer people means less risk. So experts say consider going at less popular times. The CDC says the coronavirus won't survive in a well-maintained pool, so make sure you're only swimming in pools that are being tested regularly. Also, they say it's a good idea to take your own pool toys and try to keep six feet between you and others. So will it be summer pool weather this week? Dagmar will join us after a quick break. NBC7's nightly check-in is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating and Air, Flood and Restoration. Call one We need a new AC. I don't think we can afford one. Well, I wish we knew how. Did someone say how? For a quality American-made air conditioner? You know who to call. Call 1-800-BILL-HOW. We know how. Your Wednesday is shaping up to be a beautiful day. It will be a touch cooler than the two heat waves you will be bookended by during this work week. So your temperatures along the coast, one or two degrees down. And you're looking still at the mid, low to mid 70s, partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies. Plenty of sun in the inland valleys with the mid 80s. Mountains still in the low 80s, but that'll be cool compared to where you will be this weekend. Desert, same story, 110. You'll wish you were there by the time you get to Sunday and Monday as we head in through this weekend. I'll tell you more about that the closer we get. For now, enjoy your Wednesday. It is one of the toughest summers ever economically for Belmont Park. Normally during this time, it would be packed on a hot day in July, 
but COVID-19 is definitely making its mark felt there. The indoor arcade and laser tag had to shut down following the governor's recent orders, along with a bowling alley and the indoor portion of mini golf. Those activities had just reopened in the last few weeks, and they've been seeing decent business. There are many other activities still available, including the zip line, sky ropes course, and rock climbing, but the damage financially has already been done. Each new layer that we're having to close, it does, it is costing jobs. Um, so normally on a regular non-COVID year, we would have upwards of a thousand employees here working in the summer. Um, right now we have something like 200. Um, it's, it's a really drastic impact. Park does say that most of the restaurants and food vendors there have outdoor space to serve food and drinks, but it's still a fraction of their normal summer business. The closure of the happiest place on earth is causing some problems for local businesses that rely on tourism. Disneyland was set to reopen July 17th, but that had to be pushed back indefinitely because of a spike in cases. Right now, hotels across the street from the park have fenced off their parking lots. Many surrounding businesses have boarded up with their lights off. Many Disneyland employees say they're ready to get back to work, but only if Disney can offer safer working conditions. That's gonna do it for our nightly check-in. Before we go, wanted to remind you to check out a new episode of Into San Diego, which was formerly our Insight podcast. The team now goes into COVID complacency and San Diego's uphill battle with the virus. Have a good night.